Is the K-pop industry and Korean entertainment in general just way too stressful on people that are involved in it to the point where they need to make some serious changes right now? We're going to talk about it. Yeah, we got to discuss this because this is going viral, especially in a lot of Asian circles on the internet right now. Moonbin, a K-pop member of the group Astro was found dead last week uh, due to an apparent suicide. This also comes uh, with news that South Korea's Ministry of Culture, Sports, and Tourism is passing an amendment to expand labor protections to underage K-pop idols and trainees. Yeah, so uh, we're going to talk about this. Obviously, hopefully it's not too depressing of a topic, but um, yeah, I mean, we're going to go through the comment section. We're also going to talk about, like, what are the main questions people are asking? Sometimes people are, are feeling like, oh, well, to achieve such great entertainment like the Koreans are, it's going to be a stressful environment. Right. And then also some people want to point out that South Korea in general has a very high suicide rate just across regular people as well. So I think those are all factors that come into play, but please hit that like button and check out other episodes of the Hot Pop Boys if you are interested in this. And I do think that there are really interesting like overarching takeaways for being Asian in general. Mm -hmm. under Confucianism, to be honest. Anyway, let's get into the comments section. A lot of people are blaming it on the idol system. There's a lot mm -hmm. of documentaries, a lot of exposés, a lot of former K-pop stars that were in the system for five or 10 years that are leaving the game yeah. that are now sort of like saying, man, to be honest, there were some great things from it, but that system was too toxic and too pressurized. Yeah, no, and I, I think that's the way it is with a lot of things. Like, a lot of, like, for example, I think a lot of people know that there's a lot of, like, gun deaths in America, for example, but until, like, it reaches a point where there's a whole bunch of mass shootings. Then people are like, all right, well, I got to try to change things again. And then, you know, change comes. But right? some people are comparing it to mass shootings in America in the sense that like nothing's really changed in America and nothing will really change about the K-pop industry because the K-pop or uh, I guess K-drama industry is so important to the country. Right. And at the end of the day, I think what's unfortunate is that if it breeds results, a lot of people are kind of kind of rock with a lot of the risk that comes in play. So... Um, somebody said this is very similar to the contracts in the 1940s and 1950s that Hollywood would sign the actors mm. and particularly the actresses to. I'm glad that America shifted, but it seems like Korea still has the old way structure. Yeah. yeah. And then it goes on to the next comment about the bad contracts. Like if you kill yourself or leave the K-pop industry, they're just going to replace you with another trainee. And that that is really sad to think about for a lot of people, especially if, if you go into training like Moonbin did at the age of 11. That's really Right. all you know throughout your life you know and you're in this world of like self-esteem aesthetics performance training to be perfect training to be maybe somebody that you're not right and you know there's a lot of stories of this throughout the the ages um whether it was in sports or liberace being a pianist or like there's so mm -hmm. much uh no, I'm not stars, sorry, not Liberace, right. but like some, you know, stories of pianists yeah, young stars, or, or yeah. mu musicians I mean this is not just only in Asia but there may be even more cultural Asian elements that get multi-layered yes. in Asia. Every high-pressure entertainment system or really any high-pressure system in the world is going to have some of these dynamics. However, yeah, in South Korea, it might be more layers. Right, because there may be even the looks beautifulness aspect. Somebody said it's all about mental health and social media because there have been some uh, suicide notes or expression that social media or the toxic fan base or just a pressurized fan base has been partially responsible for this. Yeah, and I think it's tough because, like, I think the fans are... You need the fans to even have an industry. They compose the industry, They right? love you, and, and but they'll also, you know, when there are comments on the internet... It is tough. And I think that sometimes, I guess, like, it might be nice to, like, what if you only saw your fans in person or something like that? I don't know. It's tough because, like, Kelly Marie Tran from the Star Wars uh, trilogy recently, like, she got off social media um, due to online bullying as well, you right. know? And she was kind of down in the dumps for a while. Obviously, she didn't take it to the and extreme level. There was but also yeah. some uh, cast members from, uh, or a cast member from Terrace House, which is the Japanese reality right. show that also went through a terrible time, tragic situation. Somebody said, this is only reminds me of the 1980s with the Jackson 5. And a little bit, like, it seems like that Michael Jackson story is repeating again and again in different pop worlds across the world. I mean, if you think of K-pop as a factory or a Korean entertainment as a factory, and you're training these kids in young academies from a young age, like, it is going to get messy because you're kind of manufacturing things. It doesn't mean that it's organic. Obviously, I think in an ideal world, you can find a lot of people who are organically 
look good and organically very talented, but it's also very hard, you know? For sure, for sure. I mean, I don't know. It's like I'm not too knowledgeable on this world, but definitely a, clearly a lot of people on the internet really, really uh, have a lot to say about it. Somebody said clearly all the money and the fame cannot buy happiness because happiness mm. is in your head and your heart. Yeah, definitely. Um, somebody said celebrity is toxic in general. Look at rock stars in America, Kurt Cobain, mm. Soundgarden, the, the leader of Soundgarden. Um, there have been so many suicides or accidental suicides over the years, whether that's OD uh, from all the way back, Marilyn Monroe to Heath Ledger to, uh, you know what I mean? There's so many yeah. things. In- and even just removing this out of an entertainment sense, like when you have so much pressure studying for a test or trying to get in the Ivy Leagues or you are in the Ivy Leagues or you're in college and you're super stressed out, that's a lot of pressure. So I want to say like, again, this is pressure that everybody feels at some point in their life. But obviously amongst high achievers and high pressure, there becomes the high and very the, the highs are high and the lows are low. For sure. I mean, this is something that is uh, globally, right? Somebody said, uh, you know, life for a regular citizen in South Korea is already really high pressure. That's why me and my family left South Korea to move to America. Mm. And uh, there's this other people. There was a lot of comments just talking about Confucian East Asian culture in general, whether that was Japan, South Korea or China, just being filled with high expectations, lack of mental health opportunities and Mm. repressed emotions. Yeah. And I want to say, like, I I guess... uh on the outside looking in South Korea does have its other issues, right? Like it already had for like from 2003 to 2019, it had the highest suicide rate in the world. Right. So then that's, Already, so I guess a right, lot of that's, people. That's, that's regular people. Yeah, too, a yeah. lot of people are feeling very stressed, and 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 suicide is the number one leading cause of death amongst ten to twenty four year olds in Korea right now. Yeah, and so, I don't want to like just single out Korea. This is right. like East Asia in general. Like, Asia in general. Like yeah. Japan. If you know a lot of there. Asians, it's kind of messed up, and it's like crazy to say this. You probably know somebody who who been through this. Yes. To be honest, like yes. if you really deep in the Asian world, somebody said when the mind is no longer strengthened by the struggle, it will begin to seek alternative options. That mm. is the way the brain works. This is somebody leaving a comment trying to understand the way the brain uh, works algorithmically. Yeah. Basically saying like when people see no way out, the brain starts to like output that as the outcome. Yeah, and obviously like Western mental health therapy is not really a thing that probably a lot of Asian countries are adopting and maybe there needs to be more resources for all these trainees. Because, listen, these trainees, they still have their own identity issues. They still have their own desires, and maybe they feel locked in, or maybe the contract's so bad, the contract says that their family's going to be in debt for, like, the next, like, 15 years or something like that. So that can also weigh on you. Uh, Somebody said the whole industry contracts need to get redone and the managers and the companies got to do more. Yeah. Right. That refers to potential, you know, we don't know the intricacies and the back end of like how everything works legally. Like who we got to pay back this advance or that. I don't know. I I guess I want to talk about David from a legal standpoint for all the changes that they're trying to make. Like are people optimistic or pessimistic that these changes are even going to help? Right. You're talking about the ministry of like pop culture, basically the changes that they're handing down. I think it really comes down to the enforcement, right? Like there was a, a lot of uh, environmental regulations in China on the books for a long time. Mm. But to be honest, a lot of people, for whatever reason, whether it was this reason or that reason, they were able to get around them. Well, it's hard to regulate. I mean, maybe like cities like Beijing and Shanghai were doing it, but you, how it's very hard to regulate for all the cities in China, right? right for right, example, right. Big... just like just like maybe certain K-pop companies might enforce it harder, but there's so many other companies that are training their trainees. Who's to say that they're going to be watched over with the same scrutiny? Here are some big picture comments. Somebody said, man, Korean entertainment is so great. It's the pinnacle of the entertainment world over the past 10 years, probably arguably even better than America. But what cost does it come at? If you look at Ivy League schools like Cornell, Andrew, they have a suicide bridge. In Japan, they have a suicide forest. You know what I mean? Like during finals week, at Cornell Lander, they block off a bridge so you can't jump off of it. This is an Ivy League American institution. Yeah, yeah. I so mean, basically, if you're at the Ivy League of anything, and it doesn't seem like it happens in sports as much, but certainly in entertainment, whether we're talking about acting or music or drama, I, I, it seems like it's disproportionately at a higher rate. Yeah, I mean, I think one big difference is sports. It's like an athletic thing. And also, you're really taught that failing up in sports is just something you have to go through. You have to fail in order to learn. However, in entertainment and maybe academics, failure is not always, it's not an option right 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 if you fail to get into harvard that's it you don't get you don't get yeah like for you to get back into harvard at some other point in your life is so hard right so i guess like 
unfortunately, that that's it. Yeah. Joining us today to give us some cultural insight into this whole issue, uh, at least from your perspective, we've got Freddie Lee joining us. You're half Mexican, half Korean. You grew up around both sides. Um, Mexico actually has one fifth of the suicide rate as South Korea. What do you think are the cultural factors at play here? I, I just think Korean culture is just more stressful in general, just because like they push the education value to their kids a lot. They have a lot of like after school programs. They have tutors. They have uh, SAT prep schools, and like it's okay to like not have like a hundred score test score than like a ninety five. Because I've seen like kids like cry over a ninety five. Right. For not getting 100. Like, I've seen too many of that, too and, many times. And you're saying, does that go to, I guess, a culture of perfectionism? Yeah. Where you got to be the best at, like, everything, right? You have to. Like, I don't know what the parents do to discipline him, but you have to get that 100 or else it's over. Game over. So, can you contrast that with what is, I guess, typical more from, like, I guess, the Mexican side of things? Because you more grew up with, uh, around Mexican culture, but you grew up in a Korean area. Yeah. Um, For Mexican cultures, I think, like, you're most likely you're going to be in a low income bracket, like with multiple like siblings. And if you follow under this like example, you're going to have like an older brother or sister who have to be like a role model or have to be more mature, act like a parent. Cause your parents are going to be ha like having two jobs probably at best and no time to take care of the kids. So you have to, as an older brother or sister have to take care of the young ones. And I think uh, they don't have time to study. They don't have time to educate themselves because they're, too right. busy they have family care. responsibilities, yes. right? But what I think the young ones have the responsibility to carry on or carry the family. Because, like, you kind you of have everything covered for you. You have food. You have someone to take care of you, look after you. All you got to do is educate yourself so you can have, like, a 5 out of 10 education and try to, like, pursue at a job that can rise that low income bracket to a middle class at the end of it. Right, right. Building blocks yeah. step by step. I guess you were kind of bringing up that, like, in a Mexican family – they want to see you try hard in life, but if you don't get the 10 out of 10 results, they still love you the yeah, same, right? They do, they do. Because like all matters is that everyone's here together as a family and we love each other and we will support each other no matter what happens throughout, throughout and through. Andrew, I guess, is that a little bit different? I guess archetypically from the Asian world, it seems like sometimes the treatment is more results centric. Yeah, I don't think it should be, but it definitely feels that way. And I think that is what's very depressive um, when you're an Asian kid under a lot of pressure is that you feel like your parents don't love you. And I think the way that a lot of parents do raise their kids, it definitely feels that way. So I don't blame the kids for thinking that way, but it's on the parents to remind the kid that they still love them no matter what. But then a lot of Asian parents are thinking, well, if, if I'm too soft to my kid, if I hug them too much and I show too much affection, even when they get B's, then they're never going to get A's. And it's like, I, I don't I don't know. That's not really, that's not, do you that's think not true. the Asian style does ultimately produce some sort of median elevated academic result, but it might be obviously at the cost of other things, right? Emotional health, happiness. Fred, what do you think? I mean, like you've grown up around a heavy volume of both sides. I mean, I think, well, 10 out of 10, like you don't need to be 10 out of 10 if you're not trying to be a surgeon, if you don't want to be a doctor, like you don't need to be an overachiever to have a decent job and live comfortably. You can be a seven out of 10. If anything, five out of 10 lowest, but seven out of 10, you should be okay living in society. Especially in America. Right, especially in America yeah. with, uh, there's just all, like a lot of money floating around yeah, yeah, in, yeah. in this particular game map that we're all living in. I guess, long story short, man, my major takeaway is that um, I'm glad that people are examining it. I think any sort of high pressure situation, and you know, as much as we said it doesn't happen in sports, Andrew, it still does happen sometimes in sports. I remember there's, a, there's this guy, I forgot his name, I'll pop it up. He recently quit the Dallas Mavericks despite being a second round draft pick. In the NBA, because he said he, he just couldn't take it anymore mentally, he switched to soccer. Mm. So, like you said, I mean, like, there's some people that are just, uh, it's not, not everybody needs to try to become, uh, to bring glory to their family in the most conventional ways. I think sometimes you can bring glory to your family or your, your, your ancestors or whatever, you know, however you've been raised to perceive it through just living a, being a great person and living a great life. Yeah, I will say this, doing sports and entertainment, though, when fans are involved in expectations of, like, hundreds of thousands up to a million people are kind of weighing on you. I think that could be sometimes a different weight. And that's why I think in entertainment and sports, there does need to be a lot more resources for people because like rather than just your family, first of all, your family pressure can mean a lot too, by the way. But sometimes like when you're getting bombarded on social media and all these fans yelling at you, you're messing up my bet or blah, 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 you're a bum, blah, blah, blah. It's like, I guess, uh, 
I guess you just have to be like trained for that. And uh, ultimately, I think it's good that South Korea and like the entertainment industry is looking into this. I think it's the first step to helping, but I, I don't think it's going to like stop 100% of people because you can't. You know? For sure, for sure. Fred, any uh, final takeaways on uh, this? Because I know that, you know, you growing up around both sides, you, even on the Asian side, you have, have seen depression and suicide, right? Um, last words, I would just say, like, if you are feeling depressed, just ask a friend to help out. Or if you're feeling that depressed, like, suicidal hotline is a good place to uh, look for and try to, like... That, that, that is a good place to get immediate help. But overall, I want to normalize seeking out professional help because I think it is great to talk to your friends. But ultimately, like, the trained professionals, that is, like, my general recommendation myself. As somebody who's been to therapy myself. So, you know, let us know what you think in the comment section below, guys. Obviously, tragic thing with Moonbin, and they're making some changes in the South Korean industry, but I think there's, like we said, a lot of takeaways for being uh, Asian in general, especially if you come from a certain type of family. Of course, it matters family to family. Um, this is the Hot Pot Boys. Until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.